Hello everybody, thought it was about time I did a little update. Hope you're all doing fine, watching a few of your gardening videos and I know some of you have sprung into the year with gusto and have plants already. Well, I'm afraid I'm still hibernating but I have finally sown some seeds. So I started off my chilies, and I've tried sowing some aubergine for the first time. But today it's all about marmalade and I put out um, a little message in my community section yesterday just flagging up a little playlist of shorts that I made. I thought it, I'm not sure it worked perfectly but the idea was there'd be a short for every step of the process and I must say I had to remind myself yesterday I bought some Seville oranges and I wanted to do a batch of Seville oranges and I thought, oh, did I, is, I think I used a slightly different process. What was that? And lo and behold, I had a series of videos and I personally found them useful. So I'm confident you can create a lovely batch of Seville orange marmalade using that playlist. And here's the, the finished product. They've turned out absolutely beautifully you can make marmalade out of any citrus and the process is it's pretty simple really as a rule of thumb get any amount of um, citrus fruit that you have got room for to fill about half the size of a big pan a muslin pan is best that's a, a special pan that's designed for jam making and the reason it's better is that the heat, well, it just works better in that shape of pan and you're less likely to get the jam or the marmalade sticking and burning on the bottom. But if you're careful, you can use any big pan. But bear in mind, you need a bit of space at the top after you've put the liquid in because it's going to bubble quite ferociously. That's, it needs that heat to turn into jelly to basically form a jam or a marmalade. So you need a big pot. Anyway, where, where was I? Yes, marmalade or jam. There's a really basic rule of thumb. You want for every pint of fruit and liquid that you end up with, you need a pound of sugar. And that's the basic secret of marmalade or jam. You don't need to worry about pectin with a marmalade because the citrus is full of pectin. I'm not going to say any more on it now other than the fact that Seville, that's the real traditional, um, in my opinion, the best orange marmalade you can get. And it comes down to what kind of marmalade flavour you like. But the, with Seville, you get a beautiful balance of tang and that bitterness that you associate with marmalade but the bitterness isn't I don't know it, it, it's there but it, it's a beautifully sort of smooth blend in with the citrus sweet of the orange so if you can and they're not in every shop last year I found them online and I ordered a big box online this year I found them at my local farmers market but if you search around now is the time that you should be able to lay your hands on some Seville oranges. It's well worth a go. The other thing I wanted to give a quick mention of is, um, you can see here, I've got some of my um, tomatoes. In a previous video, I mentioned pearl canning jars. There are a, a new version of canning jars and they have, permanent uh, reusable lids and I was gonna do a video on these and shout out about how amazing they were because I've done I've used them now a number of times you've got tomato here and here's some apples I've done and didn't have the first couple of um, batches I did the, the lids did fail to seal but then I reread and did a bit of research and I realised, whereas with most canning lids, you need to do that finger tight seal with a pearl jar. You actually have to put it on quite tightly. Um, and once I sort of got the knack of that, 
absolutely fabulous every single batch sealed perfectly and of course you're saving money the jars themselves are a bit dearer to start with but you're saving money because you haven't got to keep replacing the lids and i thought fantastic i'm going to shout about this to the world however i recently bought a batch and i bought spare rings because you basically have the lid and a little red gasket that goes between the lid and the seal and in this latest batch i've had failure after failure it might be me it might be something that i'm doing but i just wanted to put that out there so on the one hand i had months of success and now all of a sudden i'm experiencing failures i don't know whether there's a fault um on the seals that i've got on that particular batch um i'll do a bit more research and i'll get back to you with an update so it's good and it's bad i think they're a fabulous idea and i'm going to stick with them but i am a little bit dubious to buy another batch until i've done a bit more experimenting and a few more trials to see whether i continue to get bad batches now the one thing that i thought could have been the case this is the one success I had out of a small batch of pork and it did seal. It sealed perfectly, but all of it, it's three other mates. I did this in the instant pot canner, failed to seal. I think it could have been, it could have been that this is raw packed and, you know, basically it didn't have didn't have the suffi a sufficient amount of fluid in it for the jar to work effectively that could have been it that could have been it it's also there's, there's a fair amount of grease in the pork i used vinegar to wipe the rims but that could have been an issue so the there could be a culprit and it might be that i just have to be careful what i use these jars for but um, I will update you as and when I get there. So what else have we got going on in the pantry? There you go. Some absolutely beautiful, beautiful dried cayenne. This is, this is from my harvest last year. Those are lovely. Um, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Sprouting garlic. Now my garlic was a bit of a disaster last year and i didn't actually i gave up i just absolutely gave up um in autumn and i didn't remember to plant any garlic it just so happens that my rubbish garlic from last year has started sprouting i think that's a sign that i could probably get away with planting this in spring so this is my garlic plan for the season just give you a quick look at my seeds before saying goodbye so here's my unsophistic setup i've got my garland seven and i've got one of these cheap i've got one of these sort of cheap plastic things and in there we've got all of the seeds for this year and i've got a really cheap light system we've got razzmatazz Lemonella, Lakota Ricotta, Demon Red, Lemonella, My Cayenne, My Apache, and then we've got Into the Tomatoes, we've got Purple Ukraine, Pink Dream, new one on me, Amish Paste, Ethel Watkins. So most of these are from real seeds. Blue Fire. Grew that last year, liked it. Akron, Gardener's Delight Cherry, Yellow Clementine, Chocolate Cherry, and then my first time with Aubergine. My first time growing Aubergine Black Beauty.